So what my life was like before I became a leader was literally just trying to, to figure out how to navigate the world, so to speak. Um, meaning that, you know, I was born with a genetic disease that caused the muscles in my legs not to work. And we were told by the doctors that I would never sit up, walk, or be a functioning member of society. So in the very beginning, I mean, leadership was the farthest thing from my mind. It was like just proving to the world that I could be a functioning member of society and I could do all the things that people didn't think that I could. What was the first twinge that I had to make a difference? You know, I, I don't know if, if I can pinpoint one specific moment, but, but the one thing that I do remember growing up was with my parents, every spring we always cleaned out our closets and donated our clothes. Every winter we, before Christmas came, we always cleaned out all the toys that we weren't using anymore and we donated those. Um, volunteering has always been a big part of our, of our family. So that's, that's originally sort of where it started. And then as, we, as I started to get older in school and those sorts of things, I started to volunteer a little bit outside of school for like the Head Start program in the United States. Um, I, I used to volunteer sometimes at the, like, the uh, concession stand for some of the athletics, and my mom would come and volunteer for that kind of stuff as well. So that's when I started to feel like, oh, there's actually something pretty cool that, um, that I could be involved in, that I sort of am um, taking on more of a leadership role than I had in, in other things. Sort of after university, I, I literally got into the real world, and I, I didn't like what I had been sold, basically, meaning that... You know, I was told you get a good paying job, you get a house, you get a car, you get all those sorts of things, and that's what your life is supposed to be about, and it's, everything will be happy after that. And I had all those things, and I'm still waiting for that happiness. Like, <laughs> where does it, when does that come in? Um, and so I, I sort of felt, I felt a few things. I felt sort of cheated by society, being told that this is what I should have and that I didn't have. Um, and then I also felt a bit of a failure, like, what, like, what did I do wrong? Is this what everybody sort of goes through? And so for four years, I just existed in that. I didn't know what to do with it. And then uh, I finally started to talk to my friends and my family about, like, is this really what life is about? And um, they're like, you need to do a bit of searching. And a good friend of mine invited me to go on a volunteer trip to Kenya to build a school for Free the Children. And that was in 2008. And it's very cliche, but it's very honest. Uh, it was a life-changing experience. And it, it was on that trip that I recognized how I could use my story in order to... Um, not only become a leader, but hopefully inspire other people to s continue to share their stories, but also get involved with something that they're passionate about. And that, for me, was that trip to Kenya that sort of turned everything around and helped me realize that not only maybe I could be a leader for myself, but maybe I could use that and inspire other people to do the same. So, so there were a few people that, that actually helped me make that sort of jump from, from where I was to, to then traveling to Kenya. Uh, it's funny, because my parents have always been, of course, my, my biggest inspiration, biggest role models, but... My mom was a little bit like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. That's so far, and it's Africa. And, you know, of course, my dad, my dad would have loved to have come with me. I mean, he was all for it. And it was really, it was two people. Again, my friend Reed was the, was the person who pushed me to come do this with him. Um, he was the one that said, please, please come with us. Maybe this will help you. But it was also, um, and this is not a story I tell very often, but it was also my aunt, um, I sort of grew up, my, my mom has a much younger sister, and so I sort of grew up being raised by two women, and, and of course my dad, um, my, my aunt was actually in college at the time that I was growing up, so she was a big influence on me. So, <coughs> excuse me, the reason that I tell this is because I sort of went to her as well. We were just having a conversation about uh, this trip, and it's like, look, I, I don't have the money to fundraise for this, and, and my aunt thought, my aunt said, I, this just sounds like a great opportunity. You, you really should think about taking this and let us help you fundraise the money. And, and my first reaction was, no, like, I, I can't do that. that. This doesn't seem right. And just, it was just all consuming. That's all I could think about. And I thought, I went back to her and I said, yeah, I think actually, if you don't mind, I, I would love that. And she was like, good, we really just think this would be good for you. And she sort of talked to my mom a bit as well to get um, her on board. And my mom is always for sending me or, or allowing me to grow as a person, but across the world was a bit much. <laughs> so how this all evolved into public speaking is I came, so just to backtrack a bit, in Kenya, um, I was with about 300 of the students at the Free the Children uh, schools that we were visiting, and they wanted to get to know me, and they literally asked me every question you could ever think of. Um, and after I told my story, a young girl said to me that she didn't know something like this, meaning the loss of my legs, could happen to white people too. And it was that one phrase that helped me realize that, oh, wait, I'd, I'd missed something with my story in particular. Uh, you know, growing up, this was my life and I lived it, so why, why would it have any value? I mean, I, I, it just didn't dawn on me that, oh, maybe there's actually some value to this. So when she said that to me, 
And I don't know for sure, like I can only speculate, um, but in my mind, what I took away from that was that if I could show her that we all have challenges, whether we're from Kenya or North America, how can I now use my story to, to do that as well? And my friend Reed actually, building up to this, was like, you should be a public speaker. And I was like, I have nothing to talk about. Like, that's, that's silly. But it was like, okay, I can use my story and in conjunction, pair it with Free the Children and make a bit of a difference while sort of having a career. And I'd studied theater in university. I, I was really interested.